Well, I'm a senior in Fountain Valley um, and I am from Washington State. Um, I'm a boarding student, so I live on campus. Uh, some of the clubs I do, I'm in the environment, um, Environmental Protection Club and I'm also in the business club. I also help run our school newspaper. Um, we have a lot of leaderships on campus. Um, I'm part of the SCO organization, which is a student cultural organization. I'm an admission ambassador. Um, that's why I'm here today in front of you guys. Um, I'm also a resident assistant, so I help out in the um, halls and I'm also a peer leader, um, which means I help out with um, freshmen and um, underclassmen orientation and getting to know the school. Um, this year I'm doing varsity mountain biking, which is an awesome program. I love it so much. Um, in the past, I've done English riding. I think I'm going to do Western riding in the future, which is super fun. Um, and yeah, that's about it for me. Um, I'm going to pass it to Natalie, um, but excited that everyone's here. Hi, um, I'm Natalie Hossey. I'm a junior, third year junior from Moab, Utah. So I'm also a boarding student and I live in the Ballantyne Residence Hall. So if you've been to campus, you might have visited my room. Um, I am a residential assistant of Ballantyne. So I kind of help Miss Marine, our dorm parent, run the dorm. It's an underclassman dorm. Um, I'm also co-president of Environmental Protection Club. And some sports that I do are soccer, futsal, and volleyball. And I'm gonna pass it to Malachi. Um, hi, I am a junior day student from Colorado Springs. I am also an admissions ambassador and I'm in student cultural organization and I'm on our honor council, which means, oh, well, Natalie's also on honor council, but basically if someone gets in trouble, we get to uh, help make that decision of what should happen to them. <clears throat> and I'm also in French club and I'm part of Athenea, which is our school publication that is for free writing, basically. Uh, and you can write whatever you want. And uh, right now I'm in cross country and in the winter I will do climbing. I will pass it to Caleb. Hi guys, um, I'm Caleb. I'm a second year sophomore. Um, I'm a day student and I live in Colorado Springs, so right near Fountain Valley. Um, I'm in the Matchwoods Club, which is like a kind of like a Jeopardy club, basically. And we like compete against other schools. Um, the Board Game Club, and then I'm also a student ambassador. And I just got elected to be the sophomore class co-president. Um, I do Western writing for all three seasons and I'm taking Studio Art 2. Um, now I'll pass it over to Kai. Hi everyone, my name's Kai. I am a second year sophomore student. Um, I'm also an admissions ambassador. Um, sorry, I already said I'm a day student, but um, my leadership positions, I'm an admissions ambassador. I do cross country right now with Malachi. Um, some clubs I'm in, I am in business club. I attend BIPOC meetings and also board game club. And for art classes, I took ceramics last year, really enjoyed that. And this year I'm currently taking theater one and then theater two, um, second semester. And uh, yeah, I'm going to pass it on to Brianna. Hello, my name is Brianna Robinson. I am a Sorry, forgot what I was for a second there. I'm a, what am I? Hold on. Freshman, sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm a freshman student and I am a day student. I've been in Colorado Springs for most of my life. I am currently doing swim and swim conditioning. So not uh, the competition season yet. I am also in the newspaper, The Dane. I'm a writer for The Dane. And I'm in the Round Square Club where we go on meetings and it's just cultural immersion, um, talking to different people around the country. Uh, so yeah, I'll pass it over to Ms. Ratcliffe. Great, thank you so much. And Mr. Turner, do you wanna introduce yourself as well? Well, hello. Uh, my name is O'Neill Turner, and I am uh, Lindsay's 
second in command here in the admission office. So we've got four great people that work here and gonna help shepherd you all through the admission process. I see some familiar faces in these Zoom boxes. Um, I am starting my 11th year at Fountain Valley and my 14th year working at boarding schools. Um, Lindsay and I are cut from the same cloth. We're both faculty kids and our dads worked at boarding schools and look what happened. We're just, we're in it. And so my role is, is to travel around the country and the world and meet great people in their own element and connect with them on a personal level and try to help them understand if Fountain Valley might be a good fit or at least a good match for, for the admission process. And so uh, having worked with several of these uh, current students, knowing them well before they got to Fountain Valley, I can assure you the trajectory is always this way. And it's, and it's always an improvement and it's always uh, a great way to see how Fountain Valley impacts each of these young people because it, it does a great job at doing all of that. So ask your questions, please be engaged. And if you're working actively in the admission process, please make sure you connect with your admission counselor, either Lindsay, Tyler, or myself. Great to have you here tonight. Thank you so much. So, you know, I thought I would start by kind of asking some of the students to speak about specific topics that came in through some of the questions you submitted, but also some of the common questions that we get in the admission process. Um, so Malachi, I, I hope you can start us off with, you know, you've been at Fountain Valley now for three years and, you know, you've worked hard to sort of challenge yourself in the classroom. So can you describe sort of your typical academic day for, for the viewers? Um, so this is like the sort of the maximum of what you could be doing in terms of academics per day. But basically at 8.40, I have my first class and then I have a class every, I've, there's four blocks per day. So you can have four classes a day and I do, I have four classes every day. And then we get a break an hour and a half break for lunch at about 12.40. And then I have sports and I come home and I do homework for about four hours and then I go to bed. So um, that's my academic schedule. Um, and it varies since you have the same four classes every other day. So I'm used to having that those classes homework for a certain day. And it, it's nice, usually your schedule you can, you can change your schedule about a month into the school year. So if you're not comfortable with the class, you can move it up or, or move, remove it from your schedule or take a more challenging class or take an easier class um, because basically you can do whatever you want with your schedule. And the people who make our schedules, there's one, <laughs> there's one woman and she does a really incredible job. And yeah, that's my academic life, I guess. And, and maybe Malachi, just so that you don't scare them, maybe tell them a little bit about your progression in your academics from ninth yes. through 11th, because I know you're, yeah. you're a rarity to have all eight blocks. <laughs> so typically, and this is typical, most people have six classes. So you would have two periods, whether it's both of them are on one schedule day or broken up, where you don't have a class and you can study or go to your dorm or go to the campus center and just relax. So I started with that in my freshman year, I had six classes, both semesters. And then last year I had seven classes and now I'm up all the way to eight. So you really get to figure out what works for you. And the school is very supportive of that. And so are, again, so is the teacher who makes the schedules and your advisor, your advisor is just someone who you get to talk to and go to if you have any problems. And um, so, yeah, it's not like, automatic that you would have eight or six or anything because it's all about what you want to do and you know the school will help you get there. Great thank you for that and Caleb you mentioned in your introduction that you've had a pretty exciting week and maybe tell um, our families a little bit about you know your election process and and sort of you know the the activities that happen during the academic day that aren't class related. Yeah of course. Um, so this past week, we just had our class co-president elections. So basically, you have a multitude of candidates, and they separate it into male or female. And then they go into a room during a period we call all school. 
and they separate it by classes. So juniors will go to one place, sophomores another, freshmen to another, and then seniors to another place. And the candidates will get up in front of everybody. They say their speech and their little spiel about why they think they would be a great classical president. And then at the end, you get sent out a Google form where you vote. And about, I think it took about a week this year, they send out your final results in the Costco president. And so I found out this Monday that I had gotten the sophomore Costco president, like I mentioned, and that was pretty cool. Um, one thing I like about Fountain Valley that's really cool that I've heard isn't the same is that we do our elections at the beginning of the year to give the opportunity to all new students to become a Costco president, whereas most schools do their elections in the past spring so that you don't get the opportunity you come in and have kind of have to wait a year before you can do most leadership opportunities um so i'm also going to talk about some of the things that happen during the academic day that aren't actually classes so we have a block between um our second class of the day and before lunch where you have different activities each day of the week it's from about 11 15 to 11 45 each day and so Mondays, we start out with extra help blocks. That's where you have time to go talk to any teachers if you need to get help on a certain subject or you need to remake a test or any of that kind of stuff. And then we go into Tuesday where we have our advisory and that's where you get to go to your kind of collective little group where you get to share with your teacher and a collective group of students about how your week's been or challenges you faced and you kind of talk about it's like a home away from home where you get to kind of complain about teachers and homework and all that. And so I'm in Miss Llewellyn's advisory. And so we meet every Tuesday and advisory is a, I think a really unique thing that I think it happens at most high schools, but I think at Fountain Valley, it's a different experience because you're meeting with so many different new people and you kind of create this little group with them. That's a safe space to share things. So then we move on to Wednesday where we have our student life group. So today we talked about Fountain Valley's core values. Um, I'm in a group with Malachi, he's my student leader. Um, we did interpretive dances and skits to talk about our um, core values. So that was really fun to get to know new people. So it's a new group that you meet with your student life group versus your advisory. So you kind of get put in all these little groups where you make a lot of bonds and you get all these different immersions into different cultures and all that. So I think that's really interesting. And then Thursdays we go to all school. So all schools in the chapel, you're separated by advisories and you sit with your advisory and it's just like a, how most schools have in morning announcements. It's kind of like a weekly announcement where they talk about games or clubs have the chance to um, market their new fundraisers or events they're holding. And so I just, I decided to sit in the chapel tonight to kind of just show you guys what it looks like. So these are all the pews you have down here and you see it with your advisory in each pew. Um, I'm on the stage where you see, um, sometimes they have music playing. Like two weeks ago, we had a band come and play for us. So that was really interesting. Um, it's a really cool place to just tell the entire student body about whatever's going on in your week. And then Fridays we move on to, um, it's a free block. So you don't have anything during that time. So sometimes I use that time to like get homework done for my third class or whatever and it's kind of time to just have free time where you don't have to have a scheduled period um but that's about it um so i think i'm gonna send it off to natalie perfect yeah thank you so much caleb that was awesome and, and really helpful to i think explain the balance you know that we incorporate in our programming for both academics and classroom time but also understanding that there's so much more that we need to focus and talk about in high school, you know, really important topics. And, and we've set up, I think, appropriate groups to have those challenging and difficult but important conversations. So, um, you know, and, and Natalie, I know you mentioned in your introduction that you're in the dorm. So you're um, one of our, our boarding students from Utah. Um, so maybe can you talk a little bit about that transition of moving away from home and, and being a boarding student? Yeah, so um, I decided my eighth grade year that I really wasn't looking forward to going to a less than mediocre public high school, and I, as I'm sure many of you are. Um, 
so I decided to come look at a bunch of boarding schools and actually my math teacher used to he applied and he didn't get into Fountain Valley but luckily I did so here I am um but uh I decided to come here because it was not too far away from home, but it was far enough to where my mom couldn't drive in a day to come see me. <laughs> so, but I do love my mom. I actually just talked to her this morning um, because she's over visiting my grandmother right now in England. But I came over from Utah and I brought all my stuff in my dad's big truck um, and I moved into the dorms and it was great because I immediately had 15 best friends in the dorm to talk to. So like Caleb mentioned, we have a lot of groups um, that we get to be a part of, but the dorm is one of the core groups that you're gonna really get to know throughout the year because you live together. So this year I'm in Ballantyne. This is my room. You can see this is my bed up here. I have the top bunk, but um, I have a really nice room this year. Um, but, uh, being an RA, residential assistant, basically means that I kind of get to help everyone learn their way around the dorms. And, you know, in the evening, like sometimes people will bring me like math problems to help them on just because I'm a little bit older and I've probably already taken all of the classes that the freshmen and sophomores are taking. I, Cecil, my co-RA and I can kind of be that helping hand to guide them through their first couple of years before they also become student leaders and get to help other people. So. Um, you know, normally the leadership positions are for older kids like juniors and seniors, but last year I was actually able to be an RA second semester as a sophomore. So sometimes you do get little opportunities as a sophomore and as a freshman um, to be a leader if that's what you're looking to do. Ms. Ratliff. Great. Thanks, Natalie. And, and Kai, kind of now the the other half, right? You're a day student and travel home every night. Um, you know, and knowing that Fountain Valley is 70% boarding, you know, how do you feel connected to the community and make sure that you're getting the same experience um, that the majority of the students are getting? Yeah, so um, I usually arrive on campus at around eight o'clock in the morning. And honestly, I have a lot of friends who are in the dorms, like specifically South Perry is one of um, our underclassmen dorms here. And so we all day students get assigned a dorm that they have access to with their key card. So I do always feel like included, especially on the weekends, if they have activities, you can fill out your reach form and you can show up. So you never really feel excluded as a day student because you always have opportunities to come on campus. And so, like I said, like I spend a lot of time in South Perry because like, you know, whether it's getting my homework done or trying to just like get ahead on my classes, that is a space for me to work because I usually do like don't leave campus until around 6.30 or so. And you know, most nights I do eat dinner here. And so I always feel like there's a place for me here at Fountain Valley, even as a day student, if I don't live here 24 seven, this is like my home away from home. And this is just a really great place to like experience what boarding school is like, even if like, I don't know how many day students are here, but you know, if like day students, they come here and they just have so many opportunities, not just with their classes. Like if you wanna like go hang out in your friend's room, like especially with COVID, like we still wear our mask inside the dorms, but you know, you can, there's always the, um, oh, I'm sorry. It's like the living room area and the kitchen. And you know, you can just, it's just like a home away from home where I get to spend time with like my, like my boarding friends. So I never personally like felt excluded here. And, um, yeah, and I'm sorry. And like as a day student, there's like a campus center locker room where you get to put, you know, your books or like whatever you uh, clothing you need for sports. You can put that in there. I use that a lot last year whenever I didn't have access to the dorms because of COVID. Um, I really use like utilize that room to put all my stuff in. And even in our athletic center, we have locker rooms. And I always went there to change, get ready for sports. But it's like now this year, it's just very inclusive, especially with day students and boarders. So I'm gonna pass it back to you, Ms. Ratliff. Perfect, thanks Kai, that was great. And yeah, I mean, I think Fountain Valley and many boarding schools are making great forward progress with COVID, right? But we're still being cautious and we still want to ensure that our, our community is healthy and safe. And um, we've been doing weekly testing this year um, so that's one way that we're ensuring that um, we're all healthy. And, and so 
some of the restrictions we had last year, we've now been able to loosen up. Um, and, you know, we're optimistic that those will continue to loosen as we get through the winter and, and look at the spring. So um, great. And, and so Nicole, I, I know you're down in the athletics department. Um, do you want to share a little bit about um, how you've explored a lot of different activities and op option, options here at Fountain Valley during your time? Yeah, absolutely. I, if you guys can see behind me, I'm actually in our athletic center. We just got off sports at about five o'clock. Um, so I came in uh, my freshman year. Um, I'm a senior now and we didn't have this space in here. We have this beautiful giant gym. We have this weight room. We have a gorgeous climbing wall. We have a spin room. We have classrooms in here. It's like a crazy, amazing facility. So if you choose to come here, you get to experience it your whole time. I didn't get to my freshman year, but um, yeah, for sports, I um, I came into Fountain Valley not really having a set sport for myself. I wasn't um, like I didn't have one that I was thinking of, of going into. So I decided to do um, English writing which was super fun. I did it my whole entire freshman year. And it's so unique, I think, um, for a school to offer equestrian riding. And I had so much fun. And um, an amazing thing about Fountain Valley is that you have the opportunity to go and participate in kind of any sport you want. Um, our sport requirements aren't super strict. So you have three se seasons of sports and you can choose to do whatever you want. Um, we have mountain biking programs, we have awesome climbing programs, and then we have like the baseline core, volleyball, soccer, um, basketball sports. And I've kind of done a lot of them. I've done a ton. Um, right now I'm in mountain biking and like I said, I really enjoy it. And I think it's super unique to have such a um, wide array of sports at such a small school. You know, you get that opportunity to um, try new things if you want to, but we're also um, a, to a like competitive school. So if you're a varsity athlete now, you can be a varsity athlete here. Um, there's this opportunity to like go into a brand new sport or you can stay in one that you've been doing your um, whole life and really be successful in it. And we compete and it's a lot of fun and we have a lot of school spirit and fun. So I've enjoyed my kind of academic, I mean, my athletic life um, at Fountain Valley a lot. It's a lot of fun. Thanks, Nicole. And, you know, and I think what's important too to know is that, you know, if athletics isn't your passion, you know, there are other activities that are af offered after school. So, you know, theater, tech theater, um, the outdoor education group. Um, so there's non-competitive opportunities as well. So know that you don't have to do a team-based sport every season, but you do have to do something every season, every fall, winter, spring, you have to sign up for an after-school activity so that you stay engaged, you meet new community members. And what's great is they're all coached by faculty. So your math teacher might also be your mountain biking coach. Um, and so that's just another great way to form the adult student relationship. So, um, and Malachi or Kai, whoever who would love to speak, you know, I, I always wanna balance. Um, so maybe one of you can share a little bit more about our arts program and the different courses that you've been taking and, and that requirement. Um, I'll take this. So first, okay, I've taken, I'm a third year junior, so I've had the opportunity to take pottery, filmmaking, and darkroom photography and, and, and choir. Um, as a freshman, your first semester, you don't take an art or an elective outside of the core classes because you have a class called chapter one where you learn about uh, life at FES and how to adjust, which is really nice, actually. I enjoyed that. But then second semester, you choose a class, so uh, an art, typically. And we have a ton of arts. I don't think my old school would have had pretty much any of them, maybe darkroom. But my first year I did filmmaking. I don't even know if I said that, but I did filmmaking and I loved it. Um, we got to make, I mean, it was cut short by COVID, but we made still a lot of videos and movies and it was really, really cool. And 
uh, the guy who teaches filmmaking is so such a good teacher. And so I'm actually taking filmmaking too later this year. And then last year I took pottery. So we have a huge, we have a barn literally where you do arts, like a huge barn where you can do pottery and take pictures and they have, what's it called? It's like a, a studio, like a photography studio that I didn't even know existed until last year because it's just such a big area to go do arts. And uh, we also have a really amazing studio art teacher. So you can do painting and drawing, whatever you wanna do pretty much. If there's an art, you can do it. And last year I also took darkroom photography, which I loved. That's something I, I wish I could do more of. And he, we're able to kind of borrow cameras if we want and if there's any available. So I'll probably be doing that later this year. But then pottery is incredible. I have to say, uh, we have a ton of pottery wheels and you get to go and he teaches you. And there's some times where you can kind of just make what you want and then you have projects. And they're very, very project driven classes, obviously, but they, the teachers do give you a lot of room to sort of experiment with your skills and try new things within the classes that are already trying new things. So I have really enjoyed the arts because before coming here, I was never interested in any art class. And I think it's very encouraged that you get into that. I mean, it's part of your graduation requirement. And I've already finished my graduation requirement for the arts after the semester, but I'm going to keep taking them all the way through senior year because I've loved them so much. So uh, I think that that's a really, really good way to like explore a new passion and uh, yourself kind of, it's really cool. Thank you, that was perfect. I think you're right, you know, that's the best piece about a school like Fountain Valley and, and a boarding and day option is there's so much new and our goal and objective is to have students try new things and, and experience that for themselves. Um, and so, you know, I'll, I'll kind of pass it over to Brianna, who is our new ninth grade student on the Zoom tonight, um, and kind of ask her to share, you know, what her first six weeks here on campus have been like, and how she's, you know, navigated connecting and making new friends. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ratliff. Um, as a new ninth grade student, it wasn't as difficult as I thought it was gonna be. The, the most difficult part was definitely just trying to walk around the giant campus and learning the names of all the buildings. But um, uh, na navigating like academics, academically, uh, it's really just a matter of managing your time correctly and trying to make sure that you stay on top of your homework. You, you have to use free blocks because those are a great time to do your homework. You can't just kind of sit in the RK and do whatever you want because that, that's not really productive. But there are times when you can just kind of relax and connect and make friends. Um, one way that you really do connect with uh, other people is, well, not only just in class, but in, for example, uh, the second, I think it was the second week, we went on freshman retreat. We went to the mountain campus um, and we stayed up there for a day. And th there we um, played like different games, different little activities. We were broken up into different groups. We talked a lot about mindfulness. We went on a hike. We uh, made s'mores. And there were a lot of opportunities to bond there where you got to kind of, as a day student myself, uh, just being there and like sleeping over with new dorm mates and just learning everyone's names is really nice. Also kind of just getting to know everyone in your class. FES chapter one is also a really good way to get to know uh, all of the people in your freshman year, because that's just a thing just for freshmen, where you just kind of talk about um, topics uh, that's happening in the world, or you can learn about classes, learn how to organize yourself correctly. It's kind of a crash course on FES. Um, it's, as a day student, uh, definitely the a hint I would give for people giving doing day student things is try to get to the 
if especially if you're taking the buses try to get to the dining room as fast as you can otherwise the buses are going to leave you behind um uh, especially if you want dinner but otherwise you can just kind of calm down and relax and just really get to know and connect with everyone so yeah great thanks Brianna and you know you're the one who most recently went through sort of this admission process and I know a lot of families probably have you know that question of okay now we're on this zoom tonight we're learning from students what's next and so any hints or suggestions that you have for these interested families Okay, so the admission process here wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be, especially since it's like a big private school. Oh no, boarding school, it's gonna be a whole bunch of paperwork. It's not that bad, honestly. It's just a short um, essay. They ask you to do a student essay where they ask you a few questions about yourself, uh, specific topics about yourself, different things like that. And it didn't take me very long, actually. It's not, an impossible thing to do. Uh, plus it's mainly heavy work on the parents' part, sorry. Um, they mainly do like all the, the stuff for like, especially for like medicine or like whatever, just mainly parents stuff. So students don't have to worry about anything really other than the essay. But um, if you um, wanna like do scholarships, that's probably where the paperwork gets more hefty and more student-based if you're looking for scholarships. But um, other than that, it's not really too difficult. Uh, the For the interview, I did it online. Uh, they're, this year they're offering for in-person interviews as well as online interviews. So it's really up to you and whether you're comfortable or not. Um, uh, Zoom interviews, they're actually very simple. I thought they were gonna be kind of scary like asking me personal questions and like, how are your grades? But like, they're mainly just talking about what are your interests? What do you wanna do? Uh, what would you do at Fun Valley? Different things like that. So it's pretty, it's really um, calm uh, compared to what I thought it was going to be. And tours are also really fun. You just get to walk around, kind of see how the student life is around campus. And it's, yeah, it's just really calm. And so, yeah. Great, thank you so much. Um, and now this is the fun part. We really want to hear from you, you know, the questions that you have. Um, so if anyone is bold and brave, you know, and wants to unmute themselves and ask a question either to the whole group or a specific student, feel free to do that. Um, we also have some questions that have been submitted ahead of time, um, but, you know, let's see if anyone has some questions they'd like to have answered now that you've heard from our student panel. Hi, yeah, I'll start. Uh, my name is Sean Staples, and uh, my wife, Sarah Staples, is also on the line, and we're here with our two daughters, but... I kind of wanted to hit each of the student body there. Natalie kind of led into my question earlier, but my question to each of the students is, what was their motive for the accepting uh, Fountain Valley? And then what, uh, with that, what is their expectation when finishing Fountain Valley? So when, when they thought about Fountain Valley as a choice for their high school, why and then what is their expectation when they're done what, what's their plans what's their goals thank you and very good each each one of you guys um i'll take this one um so i did kind of lead into why i wanted to go to fbs but so my reason for leaving home was to kind of get away from that public school environment and to get into an environment where I felt challenged, but also like I had a lot of support and I feel like I wasn't getting that at my other school, you know, I was getting, you know, more than 100% in each class, which might sound good to colleges, but when you look at the workload that I had, it was really easy. And I just wanted a place where I could be challenged and to push myself and maybe not always get that perfect A. Sometimes I have to accept that 
not everything's going to be an A, but that's, I'm still learning that one. Um, but uh, I ultimately decided on FES. I think I got into like about five or six schools. Uh, a couple were on the East Coast. Um, and I decided on FES because it had this East Coast feel for academics minus the like preppy slash kind of almost intimidating environment that kind of pushes you away from there where you're like academics all the time every day not really worried about mental health and FES is so focused on mental health that they want you to do well but also take a step back if you're having a bad day and say you know what you can make up that test tomorrow let's focus on you today go for a run go do this go get some rest you know it's it's about you as an individual. And I think COVID has also brought that out in each of us, you know, what do I need to do for myself before I focus on, you know, taking a math test, which I did the last period. But um, I plan on after FES, kind of the point or, you know, of going to a college preparatory school is to get into college. So I'm starting my junior year now, I'm six weeks in, and I'm kind of starting that college process. I'm starting to build my college safety, college left of list of like a safety school, kind of the match of like where I think I could get in and really do well, and then those reach schools. So the college office has been great. We've already had a couple chats as um, a junior class. And one of the big things that Fountain Valley offers is called um, Capstone. And a branch off of that is Global Scholars Diploma. So basically what that is, is it's like a passion project. And this is actually what is gonna get you into college because colleges don't wanna see that you're volunteering, that you have mostly A's and that you're you know, doing sports. They wanna see that you have a passion and that you're gonna do something that's gonna make you a better person and a global citizen that's gonna make them look good because, you know, colleges want that but uh after FES I plan on going to college and then hopefully going to graduate school and then getting a really cool job getting a dog and then traveling the world that's my life plan thank you that was a question for for each student if there was time for that um I could answer really quickly uh I went to the same school for 11 years and like that's crazy but I actually really liked it there and my sisters went there for a long time and I enjoyed it but at the end of um middle school I guess and I kind of missed the admissions window but I came anyway but I decided to come here because it was the only school I was looking at but I felt like I didn't have quite the right fit for what I wanted which was a, to have like, to be relaxed. I didn't feel like I was very relaxed in my old school and also to really push myself in every possible way, kind of. And it's hard to combine those things, but somehow I feel like at FES that's possible. And so my goals personally are very high. Like I, I'm aiming hopefully to go somewhere in the Ivy League or I have three schools in the Ivy League. So it's not just like, oh, I've heard of the Ivy League, but you know, like I, 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 I have big goals for college and beyond that. And it's interesting because I feel like coming into high school, that was very much my goal. And my entire mindset was about like college and getting through, but I feel like we have so many programs and things going on here that I've also kind of like discovered my passions and like uh, so some of my passions and some of the things that I love to do and like people I love. And it, it's just ended up changing my life a lot more than I thought it would to come here. But uh, yeah, I, I essentially just wanted to challenge myself more and to challenge myself beyond just academically like take hard classes but be able to really say this is like the limit of what I can do and I, I've been able to do that here like I was talking about earlier with my schedules and with my sports and my extracurriculars and um, like Natalie was saying they'll guide you through the college admissions process but aside from like the straight up like office of college admissions like there's also just being here is challenging yourself and trying to do new things so it's uh that's what I ended up getting out of it, but I essentially came here to be a better applicant to colleges. So, yeah. Okay, I guess I can't, I'm, have, uh, sorry. Sorry. 
it's all good. We all just started talking at the same time. Um, you know, just kind of like going off in Natalie's, I really just came here for like the education to really push myself because I have a lot of family who live on the Navajo reservation in Arizona. And, you know, like schools on the reservation are so much different just in general from, you know, school, like especially Fountain Valley, it's just a whole different world. And personally, I went to public school my entire life. And so my mom actually graduated in 2005 from here and from Fountain Valley. So that's how um, I heard about it. And just like hearing about her experiences, it kind of just like, wow, you know, seeing like she got into like Oklahoma University, it opened so many doors for her. And it was just really inspiring because I was like, I want that in my life. So, you know, just, I was like super nervous when I came here because, you know, it's a private school. It's a big deal. It's something I've never done before. But once I've come here, it honestly, I just feel like a better person, honestly. Um, you know, there's just so many opportunities provided, whether it's like arts or taking extracurriculars or like more difficult classes than you can take, say, like in public school. Um, it just really like pushes me not only as a person, but academically. And it just has so many like opportunities for like student leadership positions. And ultimately, even though I am a sophomore, you know, I, I am like starting to think about colleges because I don't want to, you know, be like really like uh, frustrated or stressed out. And they give me that opportunity to like think out loud and talk to my advisor. What can I work on? What can I do here? And ultimately, like Fountain Valley has just like done so much for me personally. And it just opened so many doors. So. Um, I'll speak a little bit. Um, so for me, um, I came in similar to Natalie. I wasn't very much interested in the um, public schools that were around me in Seattle, Washington. Um, just wasn't a fit for me. So I started looking at some boarding schools um, in California. Um, I, I kind of stayed on the West Coast. And then I went to a boarding school fair and saw Fountain Valley. What I saw um, that was super unique to me and something that really like drew my attention was the global opportunities. And that was something that I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. We have a round square program. Like I can go on exchange. I can go to Peru and be and meet someone, or I can do the global scholarship diploma where I can study something that's globally oriented. I can be living with like tons of international students. Like I have people in my dorm who speak several different languages. I have people um, in my classrooms from different places in the world and I was like wow honestly this is too good to be true but it actually is reality and I mean I'm in the GSD program right now and I'm loving it and I've discovered that um, what I'm studying for my global scholarship diploma is something that I want to study in college I've also discovered here that I want to go to um, college internationally and I'd like to go to Europe for college and I don't think, I think without Fountain Valley, I wouldn't have come to that realization because it's such a global campus. It's such a amazing community where you just, you learn about other people on a human level. And I saw that in my admission process and I'm really grateful that I did because it's really shaped me um, and kind of like where I'm going in the future, which is hopefully this international um, college and um, further, yeah. So, all right, I'll go now. Um, so I think like a common thing you'll find at Fountain Valley is these kids that want to push themselves to do more and challenge themselves really. And I feel like that's like a thing they look for in the admissions office is some kids that want to go further in their education. Um, like I've lived around Fountain Valley my entire life. So I've always seen it and drove past every day and it's been like, okay, that's the school I want to go to. And so when I came here on a visiting day, I think it was 2018, and they have you sit in on classes and go through the academic day with kids. And it was so eye-opening. Like I sat in on a global studies class with Mr. Walker and a Mandarin class with a, a teacher that wasn't, that isn't here anymore. But like just that day I knew I was like, okay, I want to take Mandarin. I want to be here. And that's when I like really decided that I needed to take it seriously and really think about it. And after getting in, I took both those classes that I had sat in on and it was cool just to see the teachers recognize me and do it actually to see what it was really like. And I think that's a cool thing about Fountain Valley is 
yeah, they force you to take a language and they force you to take three arts and they force you to do athletics, but it's kind of like this thing where you sign up for to do. And it's like having everybody here at least be fluent in one language and learning another, and then being able to do a sport after school and being able to take arts through your academic day and not having to take time out of your afternoons to do it was really cool. And I think that was something that I was looking forward to when coming to Fountain Valley. Also like the round square program. And that was something I was introduced to, like Nicole said. And I thought that was just crazy to think of going to a different school in a country thousands of miles away. And so that was a big draw to Fountain Valley for me. Um, I hope to get what I think I'd like to get out of Fountain Valley is like, like Natalie said, I'd like to study, or not Natalie, Nicole, I'd like to study abroad in Europe too, also for college. And I feel like coming to Fountain Valley has made that dream so much more reality without doing this thing where I'd have to work so much harder at a school that may not be recognized as much. Fountain Valley is like a school that people from China or um, Australia, everywhere around the world is globally known. So I feel like just having that name is something that helps you push fast other um, applicants. And so that's a big draw for me to hopefully get out of Fountain Valley is to be able to make a space between me and other applicants to get into colleges that I'd like to be in. Okay, I can talk really quickly. Um, so I came to Fountain Valley mostly because one, there were so many options here. There were so many things that I could do that before uh, I couldn't even think of, like horseback riding at a uh, high school. You know, I never thought I could have that. Um, I could have that opportunity. And coming from, I came from a private school. So I knew that I wanted high, like I needed something higher, higher academics and like, something that could get me to where my goal, to, to my goals. And I guess, even though I'm just a freshman, my, um, I would really love to go to a Ivy League school with, and go to med school eventually. But um, here at Fountain Valley, I, at, from coming from a private school, I knew that I wanted high academics, but I also was missing that like social interaction in a private school that I didn't have because in public school, there's a lot more social interaction and compared to my last school, there's not as much, but here I found that I could have the best of both worlds. I could really have a lot, like I could have social interaction and have good connections with a lot of different people and people from around the world. And I could also have so many opportunities to do whatever sport I wanted, to do arts, to do music, to do so many different types of things that, um, I felt like if I did, if I went to a different school, I wouldn't have those same opportunities. So, yeah. Great, thank you. Maybe one more question. Uh, I had a question um, for all the students. What's your favorite Fountain Valley tradition? Can I go really fast? I'll just say we have a bell in the dining hall and if it's someone's birthday, they ring it. And you all sing happy birthday at lunch. So, yeah. Yeah, and um, I'm a sophomore. So I actually just got back from WIP um, like a week ago. And it's where sophomores go up to mountain campus for a few days. And honestly, I had such a great time. I learned so much there. And it was a great experience to like hang out with my classmates. So yeah, that's my favorite. Um, I think my favorite thing is Heads Holiday. So it's this day where the um, Dean of Students emails you at like nine o'clock at night the night before and it's, you get the next day off. And so basically at that time, hopefully you've already had your homework done. And then you have this whole free day ahead of you. And um, I'm kind of mad at the admissions office right now because we haven't had one yet, but I think that's a really cool thing that happens. Oh, okay, I'll yell at the admin office downstairs, yeah. Um, This isn't so much a tradition. It's like every couple of, uh, it's every week, but in my dorm it's Wednesday night, so tonight. 
Um, but we do RA nights. So every night in the dorm, you have a person on duty during study hall, which is from seven to 10 at seven, we do chores till 7.30 and then 7.30 to nine is a uh, closed study hall with your door open, phones turned in. Um, and then nine to 10 is open study hall. You can study with friends, go visit other dorms to study, go to the library, print or work on a project. Um, but probably my favorite thing that we do kind of every week, not necessarily a tradition, um, but it's RA night. So it means that we kind of have an adult who's in another, in their house, Miss Marina, our house parent. She's in her house. She's on standby, you know, for check-ins and stuff, but it kind of lets the dorm decompress without an adult. And, you know, we love our adults, but sometimes it's kind of fun just to like have a dance party and after study hall, of course. Um, and like tonight I'm going to make cookies. The other night I made mini waffles or like, you know, we have birthdays or like RA nights are just really fun because we do things like play limbo or like, you know, random stuff during like our free time around study hall. And then also it gives people the opportunity to kind of come down and talk to me about any, anything they want to get off their chest or like if they're having any issues with homework or anything. So that I enjoy it just because I kind of get to connect with all the girls in the dorm a little bit more. My favorite tradition, it's, I guess it wouldn't actually be, I mean, it is a tradition. We, they're called rally points. So on the weekdays, like our RAs will plan these kind of like secret surprises of us all going over to someone else's dorm and having pancakes like last week we had pancakes and penrose and we all just like we it's a it's kind of similar to an RNA, ra night you just get to decompress and it's so much fun um so that's one of my favorite traditions is rally points where you just get to go and chill and it's a surprise um during one of like a wednesday and it's just so nice to take a break Okay, um, I haven't been here very long, so I don't know a lot of like traditions, but the one thing I have experienced that was like probably the funniest thing ever was stupid night out. Um, it's basically, sorry, it's basically where um, students dress up in the most craziest costumes, whatever you can think of basically, could be something completely random. And it's just stupid night out. It's you, there's literally anything could happen there. Like um, the stupid night out we went to, was it a week ago? I can't remember. But um, someone shaved their head on stage. So uh, for an act and we do, there's just a whole bunch of different acts you can do. There's drinks, there's refreshments. It's basically a dance, but just, just stupid. It's just everything at the same time. So that was definitely always, that's, that, that was definitely fun. All right. Well, I am always really cautious of time and want to keep our events to an hour. I think we all have spent a lot of time on Zoom over the last, you know, 20 months. Um, but I first want to just thank our student panelists. You guys did an amazing job. And I hope you see the authenticity in everything they shared with you tonight. Um, but I also want you to know that if you have more questions, if you want to be connected to them, um, please, as Mr. Turner said, reach out to your admission counselor, and we are happy to put you in touch with students. Um, we know that's an important piece as you navigate the admission process, and we're here to help you through that. Um, thanks again for, for tuning in, for listening, for learning, and we hope to see you on campus soon. So have a great evening, everyone. Bye. Thank you.